We are speaking to the moment. We are talking about systemic racism. These murals are starting important conversations about racial justice. Plus, a new program puts home ownership in reach for residents. We're proud of, of what we have. And take a tour of the landfill and learn about all the different services. Finally, how to take advantage of the city's LEAF vacuum program. It all starts right now on this edition of Iowa City in Focus. These two murals on the Capitol Street parking ramp are designed to spark difficult conversations. They challenge individuals to confront racial injustice and utilize privilege to take action against systemic oppression. We wanted something to be aesthetically really pleasing to look at, almost like candy to the eye, but then there's this really pertinent message. We thought that the oracles would be a great way because it like spoke to the idea of the beacon, wisdom being taught to the community. Use them as like the way to teach you how to go forward. If you say that this is what you believe in, why is it not continuing in every aspect of the city from the businesses downtown, to like, just like the, the communities um, that are predominantly black in Iowa City. What are you doing for them right now? Are you speaking to them and like, hey, what kind of programs do you want to bring up? How can we support that? Murals, they need to be active rather than sort of this passive thing that becomes a part of the, the architecture, right? We wanted them to be something that's a part of the community. You may feel a certain way, may make you uncomfortable. That's fine, but Black life is far more important than how comfortable you feel. The murals are also a way for Black folk to like, see that we see you. We understand what you're going through each day. You know what I mean? That, you know, Put your head up. We know you're doing well and you're going to continue to do well. You're not going nowhere. We acknowledge you. The second part was having Jill, who was the lead painter, did an amazing job, not just like interpreting the colors that Antoine and I wanted on the mural, but also like mentoring the other two artists, um, Marissa and Janice. So that was a part of like what we wanted these murals about, like continuing it going forward. Once again, the future, the oracles are continually growing this to like a longer sustainable thing. Yeah, I actually think that's more important than the finished product, like in a sense, because you're building community, you're building careers. Some people really love it and are encouraged by it. And some people are very challenged by it. And um, it, they don't, it doesn't sit well with them. You know, those challenges, I know Antoine and Dante, you know, in talking with them, they wanted to kind of evoke uh, some of those conversations that are a little bit harder to have, that are a little bit more uncomfortable, because typically that's how change occurs. What sparked the murals in large part, other than, you know, historical systemic issues of oppression was the murder of George Floyd, which was extremely uncomfortable. So I don't know that conversations around that will ever be comfortable. And we did not want this mural to be something where it was that like, oh look, there was all these riots. We the city put up a mural. See, we're good white folks. We did not want that. And so we didn't want this mural to be something that they looked at every day and can just pat themselves on the back and keep it moving. It's like, no, every time you see this big ass mural, it's a, it's a reminder. This looks great. Thank you. 
Art is one piece of a way to resist or to advocate or to even protest. But there's so many things that are deeply rooted into these two statements. I mean, it's, it's wide, it's vast, they're large conversations. And I think it really goes into looking at how do we have a better quality of life and coexist as human beings together. Take stock of like, who you are, your privileges, what you're able to do. In those moments, in those spaces where you can make a change, push that. It doesn't have to be everybody on the street yelling Black Lives Matter. Like that, that's the sexy part, right? Like, what are you doing in your life? And like, and, it, and some of those moments are really quiet. No one sometimes will ever see that. That's when it's important. And so it's like you doing the work and building community with other people that are doing the work. The imagery that we've seen of like trauma, we're not trying to promote that. We're trying to promote like, how do we push things forward? You know what I mean? It's just, it's like, if you feel that way, that's, as Antoine said, that's inside you. We didn't create that. The word weaponize is what seemed to really be like a trigger word, but I feel like it's often misunderstood. So if you think about the tongue can be a weapon, the pen can be a weapon. It's not designed by the artist or PS1 or anyone else to mean like only one thing and that is violence, absolutely not. The African American community and like marginalized communities, BIPOC communities, for a long time celebration was not something, and joy was not something that was permitted. We created Black Joy by doing this project, that we're going to speak the truth regardless of how people feel about it. For us, all of this is Black Joy, that we are not afraid to speak the truth in this space. We're still speaking about that truth and wanting this community to, to do better. Some people may love the mural and see it and cry. Others may dislike it. Like, I'm not trying to dictate that. It's just, I at least want you to engage with it on some level. The mural is just the first iteration of the piece. And that's Dante and I's part. And then there's other people that, that will take part in other aspects of this. So it's more than just the mural. It's the community getting involved and doing more, more stuff. This is not enough. You know what I mean? This is like the beginning. The murals are not enough. This is not like something to be like the one-off. Like we did it, everything's great now. You know what I mean? That's another reason why we made it. When we started this whole project, it was what we did not want these murals to be. A mural is just simply not enough. We need to continue to have conversations and look at the bigger systemic issues and you know changes that we can make as a community. Well, you think of oracles in that sense of them predicting the future, it's like giving you this wisdom, right? That will help you in the future. And so it might be a message that you don't want to hear or understand in the moment, but like in five, 10 years or 20 years, right? Like you'll get it or, or, and I'm like, you'll get it or you'll get left behind. Visually makes you feel happier, makes you feel like you want to come here. It's going to make it just so much more exciting than just plain walls everywhere. This big bright reminder of what actually goes on, like when you're composting and when you're recycling. I hope to see opportunities to reduce the refuse that goes into the landfill. Hoping that this mural shows the residents of Iowa City what we have to offer here for services.
I think it's an awesome presentation of what we have to offer here in the area for climate change. And I think it gives people a perspective as having a visual to see what actually happens with some of the materials. I really brought her today because it matters to me to inspire the younger generation to care about our planet and you know take care of our environment. I feel like it's important to think about the environment over any other aspect of business because I mean without the environment we're not going to have anything else so it's important to kind of think about these things. I think it's starting to be more apparent that everybody needs to start doing something before it's way too late. Owning a home comes with lots of benefits, but there are also many hurdles to taking that step. That's why the city created a program to rehabilitate homes and sell them back at an affordable price in the South District. Reinvesting in the community, that's a major goal of the South District Home Investment Partnership Program. The mission of the South District Program is to provide affordable home ownership opportunities to residents of the South District neighborhood. And to accomplish this, the city will purchase, rehab, and sell duplex properties with a focus on Taylor Drive and Davis Street. The program aims to reduce financial barriers for Iowa City residents looking to make the switch from renting to owning. We hope to encourage investment in the neighborhood and establish a balance of rentals and owner-occupied homes. Natalie Odilo was renting in the South District when she learned about the program. I figured I would never own a home again. It's just very difficult to find affordable housing. She saw this as an opportunity to not only become a homeowner again, but also to do it in the neighborhood she loves. It's a nice, pleasant neighborhood. Here, people are out and they say hi as they go by. You know, I love to hear children playing. Through the program, she purchased this home on Sandusky Drive. We can sit outside here and feel pride. To be eligible for the South District program, the household must be under 80% of the area median income. Participants must also complete a free home buyer education course and be able to get financing for the home. The city does have the option to assist with down payment costs. Through the program, we're able to offer up to $25,000 in down payment assistance for eligible buyers, and this often can make the housing payments pretty affordable for the buyers, often less than what they're paying right now in rent. Natalie was able to take advantage of down payment assistance, which helped lower her monthly mortgage payments. Prior to that, she and her mother, who is now living at their new home, had both been paying rent at a much higher cost. Including my homeowner's insurance, it's $509 each month. So much better than the combined, you know, $1,400 my mom and I would have been paying between the two of us. The city has teamed up with the Greater Iowa City Area Home Builders Association to help with some of the rehab work. This partnership allows students from the Iowa City Community School District and Kirkwood Community College to get hands-on training. It's been a really fun class, definitely one of the most educational classes I've ever taken. We got to try out a lot of different practices for construction. These are life skills that even if you're not going to go into the field, it's really great just you know to, be, to know how to rebuild your deck or redo some drywall or just paint. The transformation of these homes is incredible. Each unit that participates in the program will receive $35,000 in rehab. We focus on major systems of the home and we also try to incorporate sustainable features to reduce costs for the homeowner. And then we also do some aesthetic things like update the kitchen and the bathroom. Natalie's duplex includes solar panels on the roof, helping cut energy costs. My gas and electric bill here, even though I have at least twice the square footage, we're paying less than I paid for the little two bedroom space that I was renting previously. If you are interested in learning more about the program or are ready to apply, the best place to start is icgov.org slash South District. The application process has several steps. You can submit your application online through the city website as a first step. Then you'll work with city staff to complete your income verification so we can determine if you're eligible for the program. From there, you would complete a home buyer education course, and then you would work to get pre-approved for financing from a lender. And city staff is available to help you through each of these steps. 
and having someone to help walk through the steps has proven to make the process pretty smooth. Start to finish, I would rate the process 10 out of 10 being the most, you know, the best experience I could have, you know, could expect. When storms and strong winds wreak havoc, you may find your yard littered with downed branches. If branches are in the street, please report it to the Iowa City Forestry Division. You can do that using the ICGov Express app or by calling 319-356-5000. The Forestry Division will only collect limbs that come from trees on city property. Homeowners are responsible for clearing all debris that come off trees on their property. One of the easiest ways is to place it at the curb for pickup, but there are requirements in order for the city to collect it. Branches and sticks must be four inches in diameter or less. They must be securely tied in bundles that are no bigger around than 18 inches and no more than four feet long. Each bundle must weigh less than 50 pounds. Follow these specifications and set the bundles at the curb for pickup on your regular collection day. You can also put debris in your yard waste cart, but it still must be cut up. Another option is to haul storm debris to the yard waste facility at the Iowa City Landfill. Yard waste must be kept separately from trash and cannot go into the landfill itself, so make sure to keep brush separated from other materials. By using any of these methods, cleaning up storm debris can be simple and easy. To learn more, visit icgov.org organics. The Iowa City Landfill and Recycling Center offers many different services to help you safely and responsibly get rid of materials. However, the space can be a little intimidating if you're not familiar. Here's an overview of the facility. Welcome to the Iowa City Landfill and Recycling Center, located on the west side of Iowa City. Our landfill serves residents and businesses of Johnson County, Kelowna, and Riverside. So come on in and we'll show you around. Our normal business hours are Monday to Saturday from 7 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. As you drive into the Iowa City landfill, you'll notice you have several options on where to go, depending on what materials you have to get rid of. Pull into lane one if you have hazardous materials to drop off. Remember, the Hazardous Material Collection Facility is open to residents in our service area on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. each week. Pull into Lane 2 if you require assistance from our Scalehouse operator. Any vehicles that have trash, recycling items with a fee, loaded compost for purchase, or any commercial vehicles should stop at the Scalehouse. Pull into Lane 3 if you are a resident with yard waste or food waste to take to the compost facility, or no fee recycling items such as cardboard or glass. Lane 3 bypasses the scale house window for any residents coming out to the landfill for these no-cost services. As a quick recap, Lane 1 is for hazardous materials. Lane 2 is for the scale house where you can pay for services and ask questions. Lane 3 is for no-cost residential organics and recycling drop-off services. Now let's talk a bit more about what services are available in our service area. As we mentioned, residents with hazardous material can pull into Lane 1 during facility open hours. Residents can bring cleaners, oil-based paint, sharps, aerosols, batteries, and more to this facility at no cost. Eligible small businesses can also use this facility by appointment, but registration is required before they can bring items out for disposal. Learn more about these hazardous material programs at our website. A lot of vehicles that come to the landfill pull up to the scale house. When you pull up to the window, let the scale house operator know where you're coming from, for instance, Iowa City or Coralville, and what materials you have, such as tires, appliances, or garbage. The area to the right of the scale house is where containers are located for residents to drop off garbage, basic recyclables such as glass, cardboard, and metal cans, scrap metal, motor oil and oil filters for recycling, and appliance recycling for items such as refrigerators, stoves, and lawnmowers. The area to the left of the scale house building has an open garage bay where electronic recycling, light bulb recycling, and hardcover book recycling are located. And finally, the area beyond the scale house is where tire recycling and the compost facility are located. 
It is normal to visit several of these different program areas at the landfill depending on what you need to dispose of or recycle. If you bring a TV, a lawnmower, and a yard waste for instance, you will visit all of these areas to recycle and compost. Now let's talk a little bit about the compost facility. The compost facility is where food waste and yard waste are ground up and processed into community compost and wood chips. Residents can bring yard waste items such as grass, leaves, and branches, or food waste items such as vegetable and fruit parts, bread, meat, dairy products, and much more. For a full list of accepted items, visit our website. If you are planning a trip to the compost facility, look for the sign indicating where to leave your organic materials. Maybe you are visiting the landfill to pick up a load of compost or wood chips. Both of these are available at the compost facility while supplies last to residents and businesses. Compost is $20 a ton and wood chips are no cost. Remember that we have community drop-off locations elsewhere for a lot of our programs, which could save you a trip to the landfill. Batteries, light bulbs, electronics, motor oil, glass, and cardboard are just a few of the many materials that we have several other drop-off locations for throughout Iowa City. As you can see, we have a lot of programs available at the Iowa City Landfill. This means on busy days, though, you may have to wait in line. We look forward to serving you and appreciate your patience. Thanks for watching. Fall in Iowa City means more than just football. It's also when the leaves start piling up in your yard. But the city has a convenient way to deal with fall foliage that doesn't involve struggling with paper yard waste bags. Check it out. Each fall, the City of Iowa City offers the Leaf Vacuum Program as a convenient, efficient way for residents to get rid of fallen leaves. Many people choose to mulch their leaves, which is proven to add nutrients and improve soil. Curbside customers can also place leaves in their organics cart, along with other yard waste and food scraps, or can use paper yard waste bags. To use the leaf vacuum program, the first thing you need to do is figure out which zone you're in. Visit icgov.org slash leaf vacuum to see the map and determine which zone your residence is located in. That website will also have schedule updates on which zones crews will be working in. You can also subscribe for email updates at icgov.org slash eSubscriptions. Or you can follow the City of Iowa City on Nextdoor for daily updates, or get weekly schedule updates on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. If you don't have internet access, call the Streets Division for schedule updates. The amount of material, changes in weather, and equipment breakdowns can all impact our progress, so schedule changes are common. Because it's difficult to determine how fast crews will move through each zone, it's important to get your leaves out to the curb in advance. What you want to do is keep them within 5 feet of the curb in the right of way to ensure the hose can reach them. Don't rake leaves into the street as they may be washed into the storm sewer and cause flooding. If you can, try to place them in bigger piles. The minimum size for one pile should be the equivalent of one paper yard waste bag. Avoid placing them around obstacles like mailboxes, electrical poles, or utility boxes. And there should be no large branches or sticks in your piles, just leaves. Vehicles are another barrier to consider. Where calendar parking is enforced, leaf vacuuming will occur on the side without parking. 
Even if there are no parking restrictions, be considerate of your neighbors and the LEAF vacuum crews by following the schedule and moving your vehicle out of the way. In areas where on-street parking is heavy, no parking signs will be posted while crews are in the area. Residents can request signs to be placed on their street by calling the Streets Division, which will review the request for consideration. By following along with the schedule and preparing your LEAFs in advance, you should be able to take advantage of this great program. That's our show. We'll be back soon with another edition of Iowa City in Focus. 